The ocean is vast and scientists and researchers have long since admitted that what we know is barely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what exists underwater. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting discoveries. An interstellar object that crashed into the ocean in 2014. On January 8, 2014, something incredible and almost unbelievable happened. A small meteorite belonging to another star system crashed into the Pacific Ocean. It struck the atmosphere about 100 miles off the coast of Papua New Guinea, deep into the dark of night. It had the energy equivalent of about 120 tons of TNT. And while that might sound like a lot, a good comparison to note is that it really was about 1% of the energy of the Hiroshima device. There was no known witnesses confirmed to have seen the crash. The meteorite was dubbed Cineos 2014-0108. It has recently been confirmed to be the first interstellar object ever discovered within our solar system. Amir Siraj, who is an astrophysicist at Harvard University, has been studying the meteorite since it was first discovered. It was traveling at 37.2 miles per second relative to the Sun, which is too fast for any object belonging to our solar system, which would be bound to the Sun's gravity to at least some extent and therefore travel at a slower rate. Now Siraj and his colleagues are gearing up to do what has never been done before. Not only are they going to dive into the deep waters of the ocean to retrieve fragments of the meteorite, but should their mission be successful, they will be the first to ever examine an interstellar object so closely. The operation is meant to be undertaken with the use of a magnetic sled the size of a king-sized bed on a long-line winch that would be dragged along the seabed. The hope is that tiny fragments of the meteorite will be attracted to the magnet and caught. This expedition, however, is estimated to cost $1.6 million and Siraj and his colleagues are still working towards gathering that amount. So far, they have raised $500,000. Because of this, it is still unknown when the project will be started. For now, we can wait impatiently to reap the results of finding and examining something that travelled far and wide across solar systems to reach us. Scientists discover a mysterious shadow zone in the ocean. There is an area of ocean containing what is referred to as the most ancient water on Earth. And the reason for this is as interesting as it is confusing. Deep below the surface of the North Pacific Ocean lies a patch of water that has remained stagnant and unmoved for over a thousand years. It's thought that the last time these waters came into contact with the Earth's atmosphere was as far back as the time of the Vikings, Mayans and ancient Romans. In an area called the Shadow Zone, the oldest waters on Earth are trapped at a depth of 1.2 miles. The age of the water has been confirmed using carbon dating, but the reasons for it staying there are a little less clear. With barely any vertical movement, the ocean water in that shadow zone has been suspended for centuries. After examining previous research on these waters, Researchers attempted anew to gain a better understanding of what was happening and began to study what others had not, the seabed. This revealed that the depth and shape of the ocean floor also played a part in why the waters had stayed there, unmoved for so long. As it turned out, the rough topography and distance from geothermal heat sources protected the water in that area from the movement caused by water currents. The level at which the shadow zone sits means that it is affected neither by surface currents nor by deeper currents that travel through the rest of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean evidently holds a lot more than we might ever imagine, from meteorite fragments from another solar system to water that has not moved nor changed since ancient times from thousands of years ago. Microbes that produce oxygen in the dark Though there have been few microbes known to produce oxygen, these exist in very specific habitats and extremely limited quantities. Now, microbes have been found that produce oxygen without sunlight deep underwater. The microbe's scientific name reads Nitrosopomyllus maritimus and is called ammonia-oxidizing archaea. 
For the longest time, researchers and scientists were confused at how these microbes could exist in such large quantities in waters without oxygen, considering they need oxygen to effectively play their role in the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is a process in which nitrogen is washed out into the ocean, where it ends up as ammonium. Then, these microbes, the ammonia oxidizing archaea, oxidize this ammonium to nitrite so that their neighboring organisms can convert them back to gaseous nitrogen, thereby completing this cycle. They are so common, in fact, that every fifth cell in every bucket of seawater is one of these little microbes. This, of course, sparked the curiosity of researchers who wondered whether they were merely ghost cells or if they may have a role in oxygen-depleted waters after all. As it turns out, these little guys make their own oxygen. In an experiment, Don E. Canfield, a professor of ecology at the University of Southern Denmark, placed these microbes in waters with oxygen. In minutes, the oxygen was depleted, until shortly after when oxygen levels started to increase. And while the amount of oxygen was certainly not so much that it could sustain the Earth, it was enough to sustain the microbes themselves. And when they do make a little extra, it is quickly taken by other organisms within the underwater neighborhood, meaning the oxygen created never leaves the ocean. Even though microbes are tiny, this is no small discovery. Knowing this about the microbes and the ocean at large gives researchers and scientists more insight into the inner workings of the Earth. The likelihood of this sort of organism lifestyle existing in yet thoroughly unexamined parts of the ocean means that we must rethink our current understanding of the marine nitrogen cycle," said Beat Kraft, an assistant professor in the Department of Biology at the University of Southern Denmark. The next step in their experimentations is to examine various water samples from around the world, starting with the Mariaga Fjord in Denmark and eventually extending to the waters of Mexico and Costa Rica. The ocean is enormous and it's no huge surprise that so much exists within it things that have always been there and things that have ended up in there due to just how much of the Earth it covers, from a huge meteorite that happened to land in the water to tiny ammonia-oxidizing archaea, there is so much to discover within the bounds of the ocean. But what do you make of these incredible discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.